Okay, so you know, clearly on Max, loosely defined as you know, you park your car in, the machine does all the work. Um, you know, so I think that you know, in, in, in what I do in the territory that I am, you know, that's all I see. You know, I'm a very small market, very rural area. So we don't see the conveyors. We do uh, Simonize as a company. We do a lot of of tunnel stuff, and we do it all. That you know, this is specifically what I work in. So. So there's two main types of, um, of your invade on max. One would be your friction bay, which is going to be anything that has a brush, something that touches the vehicle, and then your, uh, your touch plate. Okay, there are hybrid machines out there. Um, you may or may not see. Some of them are a little bit older. Um, they're not uh, as common. Um, I think the touch free right now are a little bit more common. Um, uh, but I think that's changing. I think that uh, we're seeing a little bit of a trend um, change here. So. Um, not really going to go over the hybrids too much, but you're going to get a little bit of information on both um, the friction and the cut free, so it'll cover uh, both of those things. So, first, I'm going to talk about you know your friction in-day automatic. Um, the friction in-days um, have had a lot of technology come into them over the last five years. Um, you know, this was the original you know in-day automatic. You know, you had your cloth brush and you sat in the car and they were hydraulic and you had the machine driven back and forth and you sat in your car and you know you rock back and forth as it's going back and forth on your vehicle. So there's been a lot of innovation coming to these new machines with um, torque sensors where we're not touching the vehicle nearly as much um, and we don't have the damage claims like, like we once did. So, so consumers are becoming more comfortable with them um, and uh, owners are becoming more comfortable with them. And at the end of the day, you know, you're, a lot of times you're going to get a better wash because you are touching the vehicle. Um, sometimes you're going to get you know, that customer out of the blue, hasn't washed their car in six months. You know, they come through on a, on a touch free and they expect it to be, you know, detail clean. So we're just not going to get those. So it's nice, especially for uh, situations where you might have multiple bays to be able to have one and one. And we're seeing that more and more common um, coming in these different areas. So a typical, you know, uh, in-day automatic friction program, this is how I would run it. Where, you know, we're running a high preset first, okay, and this is very similar to how a, a tunnel setup would be. We don't put it at a high, real high concentration. Uh, we just want it to really start loosening the road film. Then we're going to follow that with our brush, uh, brush lube, which is typically going to be a neutral or a low pH. Um, typically, I like to run a low pH because you're getting more clean power with, with it than just a neutral. A neutral typically just going to be for lubrication. Um, then we're going to follow it with uh, triple thumb. Um, in this particular instance, um, on the friction machine, we can go with the conditioner-based triple thumb. Or we can go with a polish-based triple thumb, which would be like um, uh, like a wax base, something that's going to rinse uh, a little bit better on the vehicle. And it really depends on, on where your programming is and when you would want to put that on the vehicle. Uh, the conditioner base, we can also use that as a lubrication um, for the brush as well. So then we're going to rinse that. We're going to apply our premium wax, hot wax, our clear coat, uh, drying agent, spot free rinse, and a dryer. So this would be a typical uh, top package. You know, so we start you know getting into the lower end packages. We start taking things away. We take away from the home. We take away the hot wax. Um, and we start taking away the dryer uh, and the drying agent. But um, very typical setup. Um, so, the one thing about you know the friction uh, in bag um, is it you know relies a lot more on mechanical capability and the brush to do the cleaning. Um, you know it is very important on those machines you know for damage claims that you do have the proper lubrication and we are getting the right amount uh, of soap on the vehicle, um, especially using the pre soap. You know that's what's going to get those hard to reach areas. That's your your complaint areas is backed by the license plate. You know, it doesn't get. Same thing with the tunnel. That's where that, that high pH pre-soap comes into play um, is to help loosen that road film and then our high pressure which will, will help to take that off. Um, again, like I said, uh, triple foam can be a conditioner-based triple foam or it can be, um, I call it chase triple foam, depending on where you have it uh, in the wash process. Um, here is uh, slide of the actual products um, that would be for a recommended usage with realistic usages. Um, you know, where we would use uh, like our magic luster, that would be our brush lube, that is a low pH. Um, you know, we're 50 mils, we're a little under two ounces of that particular product. 
um, high pH, which is a plus, which is a pretty strong pre soak. Um, an ounce and a half of that, uh, bone dries our drying agent, uh, clear coat protectant, uh, be our triple bond, a little bit under an ounce of that. Uh, conditioner, blue conditioner, pink conditioner, yellow conditioner is our triple foam, and uh, hot wax and shine I have in there um, is our premium wax. For those of you that don't know, the milliliters when you convert it to 70 milliliters to an ounce, like when you were saying, you can see, you know, you get a quarter of an ounce, half an ounce, three quarters of an ounce. So 30 milliliters, it's easier for us to do cost per cars on milliliters since it's more exact instead of rounding up to like a quarter ounce or half ounce. So we're, we're measuring in very small samples. So everything that we have you know, on our line that you're going to buy from here is all, you know, industrial strength. So very, very strong chemicals. So that's really uh, the base of it um, for the friction machine. You know, at the end of the day, the, the thing that's actually nice about the friction machine, although you will have more of those damaged claims and or there's the chance of swirling, um, the machine is very forgiving. Uh, you're capable of washing a lot better because you're getting something to, to break that static bond. Um, you know, the, the real fun comes into the touch-free MV automatic. Um, touch-free MV automatics really became wildly popular from the PDQ and the laser wash. You know, back in the 90s, it was very user-friendly, cleaned very nicely, it made it as a vehicle. And, you know, since then, um, every other manufacturer has some type of copycat, something of that machine. Um, and they're just so widely popular um, that uh, that's what we see in all these different markets. What, what comes to the true challenge is, is, is trying to clean the vehicle without touching it, you know, with, with just using um, the machine and, and the chemistry. So um, what, uh, what I'm going to talk about today is, is the five factors of touch-free cleaning. So what, what's more important with touch-free is um, you know, common misconception, well, it's the chemical that cleans the car. Yes, the chemical does aid in cleaning the car, but there's a lot of other factors that goes into that as well. Um, so starting with um, the water, okay, so the water quality in an in-bank automatic is very, very important. Um, how it affects uh, the cleaning of the vehicle, uh, time uh, being one of the factors, um, additionally temperature, uh, the mechanics, and then uh, finally we'll talk about the uh, chemistry. So water, uh, which is the basis of every car wash, right? We have to have water to wash our cars, the basis of the chemi chemical. So, you know, water is very important in what we do. Um, most specifically, you know, what I look at on a case-by-case -case basis is water hardness, um, and additionally, uh, TDS, which is our, our total dissolved solvents. Um, so, Water hardness, what is water hardness? Uh, water hardness is specific minerals that are in your water, which is your calcium and magnesium. Um, you know, water hardness, you know, why, why is it important? Well, you know, water hardness uh, will actually neutralize uh, surfactants uh, in your detergents. So, you know, you can lose up to 5% of your chemicals effectiveness um, for every grain of hardness that you have. So if you don't know where that hardness is and you're not taking that hardness out, um, you're actually weakening um, that chemical by using hard water. So it's very important um, that we know where we're at and we're, we're taking that, that water hardness out. Um, so uh, additionally, you know, hard water, you know, over the course of time, you know, can clog, you can run into a lot of mechanical issues with it as far as clogging injectors, check valves, um, solenoids, lines, nozzles, and, and this predominantly will happen with your outgoing cleaner, which is your your base cleaner of your uh, your car wash. So, you know, hard water. You know, if you're not familiar with it, you don't see it. It's the same thing that you're going to get on your your uh, your sink faucet or your shower head at home. You know, in the car wash, it just happens a lot faster. You know, especially whenever uh, whenever you have a lot of a lot of hardness. Okay, and then additionally, soft water can also, uh, one of the things that we'll do is we'll make your detergents foamier, whether it's a uh, uh, lubricant or, or a detergent. Um, same thing in your shower, you know, if you have soft water, there's a huge difference between zero grains hard and five. You'll get a richer lather, and it's also going to extend the membranes uh, of your RO system. Um, 
to you know, some additional questions. You know, what, what level of water hardness is acceptable? Um, you know, and this is going to be typically on, on a case-by-case ba -case basis. <coughs> For touch-free cleaning and what I do when I go to these sites, my answer every time is zero. You know, if you want to be you know, the best, um, you want to have the best quality, because that's what we're really always fighting, is, you know, is you know, cleaning that vehicle on the most consistent basis. Um, you know, what is the level of acceptable, you know, if you have one or two grains, you know, is that acceptable? Yes, it is. Um, but typically, you're not going to, unless you're doing something, you're not getting it from the municipality um, in that type of condition, which I have seen. Um, and I've seen it as high as 30, you know, which is really bad. So, um, you know, the next question is, should I have a water softener? Again, for touch-free cleaning, absolutely. You should have a water softener. Um, if you have a friction machine, you should have a water softener. I'm a firm believer, even with a tunnel, you should have a water softener. Everything that touches that chemical and that chemistry uh, in your wash, that water should at least be softened. So, um, you know, it, the question that really comes down to is, is, do you want to be the best? Do you want to offer, you know, the most, uh, you know, consistent, clean, you know, dry, shiny vehicle? And that's that's really where I look at is, you know, that's my goal. I want to be the best. That's what's going to bring that customer back. You know, is that they they get a pleasant experience. You're meeting their expectations or exceeding your expectation, and they know that they're going to get the best quality wash they can uh, when they come to your car wash. So this actually just happened to me a couple weeks ago, and I thought it was a perfect example to display. Um, this was a customer of mine. I got a, a phone call because he wasn't using any tire cleaner. No tire cleaner coming out. So, you know, I was able to diagnose this very quickly. Um, this was from Water Harvest. He forgot to put salt in his brine tank. The guy has about eight to nine grains of hardness at his, at his site. It took two weeks for that to happen. What so am I looking at? This is, uh, this is a stainless steel tank, okay? And you can just see the, the crystallization. Uh, this is the chemical and the way that it adhered, uh, the alkalinity adhered to the, uh, uh, the calcium and the magnesium and crystallized, it scaled. So it clogged up all that, I had to tear all that out, clean it up, completely clogged up this uh, stainless steel filter, um, and had to make sure, of course, the softener was working right, and uh, to get it going again. So it just can show you some of the, the effects that it can do, and of course, this is an extreme um, situation. Um, this doesn't happen you know, very often, but you know, this is what can happen with water, water hardness, uh, specifically with your alkalines. Okay, so moving on to um, TDX, which is better known as our spot-free water. Um, you know, this is something that should be in every system, whether it's self-serve, uh, automatic, um, tunnel. Um, you know, TDS is such an important thing, specifically within the automatic. So this is going to be your final rinse. Um, so your TDS is going to be obtained from your reverse osmosis. Um, which is going to give you about as pure water as you can get. You know, we're creating um, through a, a reverse osmosis uh, process, you know, two, two types of water. We're pure water and the water with all the rest of the crap in it. You know, so, in, in, you know, 10 years ago that water would have just gone down the drain. Now we're reclaiming that water and using it back in the process again for things like high pressure rinse or uh, undercarriage, you know, because uh, water is such a commodity now. Um, and then uh, our spot free, of course, is uh, going to be all, always the final rent, so we don't leave any spot in the vehicle. Uh, an important thing to know uh, if you don't have a, a water softener is that your RO unit will remove that hardness. So one of the things that you risk uh, with running um, just regular city water into your uh, RO unit is um, you're going to clog up those membranes. You know, if you're found with membranes once a year, that's why. You know, a water hardness, it sticks, and you're, you'll watch your production uh, on that RO unit slowly go lower and lower and lower and lower until it's not, you know, like, hey, why am I running out of spot free water? And that's probably the reason why you change the membrane to back to new again. So, again, those, those, uh, that, that water softener will dramatically uh, increase the lifespan uh, of, our, of your RO unit. Uh, chlorine. Um, this is the only time, you know, that from a chemistry standpoint, you really hear chlorine you know, brought into the mix, but chlorine is another thing that will absolutely kill your membranes. Um, 
you know, we use a, uh, a carbon filter to, to remove it. So, you know, if you have a RO unit, you should also have a uh, carbon filter. So chlorine very, very quickly will actually eat away um, your RO membrane. So general rule of thumb, I've heard this number, you know, seven different ways. Um, way, the way I look at it, what I've seen in my experience is, you know, we're looking for 50 uh, ppm, which is 50 parts per million. So when we measure TDS, which is our total dissolved solvents, um, we want you know, that quality water to be really as low as zero as possible. You know, you can almost never obtain that. I mean, if you're five, six, you know, that's perfect. Um, when you start creeping up into even that 50 range, that's a lot higher than I'd like to see, but typically you're not going to spot on the vehicle. Um, and there may be some other reasons as to why maybe your production is, uh, is too high. Um, you know, and, and those are some things that, uh, that you should know.